Welcome to our brand new series, The Upside Down Kingdom. I have been anticipating this series for some time, and man, I tell you, you are going to be blessed over the next few weeks. Why don't you grab your Bible? If you got one, go to John chapter number 18. We'll be starting there in just a little bit. The pastor was out looking for somebody to help him teach the fifth grade boys class in Sunday school. And he said, anybody wants to help me out, why don't you show up after church? Two attorneys showed up. Both of them wanted to teach the same class. And one att- they knew each other. And, and one of the attorneys said to the other attorney, he said, man, you're not that spiritual. You, you, you can't teach a Sunday school class. He said, boy, I bet you I'm more spiritual than you are. The one attorney said to the other one, he said, well, let's just give you a test. Quote the Lord's Prayer. All righty. He said, um, um, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake. The other attorney cut him off. He says, man, I didn't know you were that spiritual. Wow, you should teach the class. Now, some of you won't get that joke. Because that is not the Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer is one of the best passages of scriptures you can uh, memorize in the entire Bible. It's found in Matthew chapter number 6. I'm just going to show you a little bit of it right here because it's going to kick off our little study here. It says, Our Father, why don't you say this at home together with me? Our Father, which art in heaven, I love this King James Version. Memorize it in King James. Makes you feel, makes people think you're Shakespearean or something. Our Father, which art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Holy is your name, but thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have a new theme on our stage that says, as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to talk to you about the kingdom of heaven. You know, everybody has an agenda today. Everybody wants it their way. Everybody has plans. Everybody has programs that they want to accomplish. But do you realize that God also has an agenda? God has plans that he wants to accomplish, not just in heaven, but he wants to accomplish it on the earth. Now, if you live in America, and many of you don't because we're all around the world, if you live in America, you're constantly reminded of which kingdom you belong to. Every time we say pledge allegiance, we were taught in school. Every time we went to school, we did uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the kingdom, (laughs) and to the kingdom for which it stands. You see, we say that if you're living in the United States, you're a part of a kingdom. If you belong, if you were born here and you're, uh, you're a U.S. citizen, you belong to the kingdom of the United States. You get the benefits of that kingdom. You, you, you have regulations in that kingdom. You have to act, <coughs> pardon me, like that kingdom wants you to act. Oh, so here's another thing. But if you are part of the kingdom of God, <laughs> you have to be born again to get into that kingdom. Just like you were born in the United States to be a U.S. citizen, you have to be born again to get into the kingdom of heaven. And there's this underlying theme throughout the entire Bible. It's about the kingdom of heaven. It's without the theme of of the kingdom of heaven, the Bible is just a bunch of disconnected stories. One good story here, one good story there. But no, 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 no. It is from first is from the beginning to the end. It's the kingdom of God operating in our lives. If you're writing notes, I want you to write this one down because trust in Jesus, trust in Jesus uh, will get you for salvation. Trust in Jesus for salvation will get you into heaven, but it not, does not automatically get the kingdom of heaven in you. 
That's what I want to talk to you about. The kingdom of heaven inside of you. Getting the kingdom of heaven comes by conversion. And uh, Colossians 1, uh, 13 said that you and I used to belong to another kingdom. We used to be belong to the kingdom of darkness. And, and he said, once you were in the kingdom of darkness, but then you got transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. Think about that. Before you were born again, you were in the kingdom of darkness. He rescued us from that kingdom and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Think about this because now you were living in that kingdom. Now you're living in this kingdom. There's different rules to the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, than what's going on in the kingdom of darkness. But, you know, if you're in the kingdom of heaven, it comes with a commitment. I'm going to commit myself to living for God. Uh, and it, 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 but my question is this, is the kingdom of heaven really ruling your life? Is it really operating your life? Too many, we, we do our own little agenda and we ask God to bless our agenda rather than fulfilling his agenda. <laughs> his agenda is that the kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it will be on the earth. So rapid fire, I'm going to give you something here. God's kingdom has four parts real quickly. Number one, the kingdom has a king. We know who that is. God is in charge of the kingdom. Secondly, the kingdom has a domain over which this king rules. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We, he has a whole domain by which this king rules. Thirdly, the kingdom has regulations. <laughs> regulations and guidelines that guides those who live in the kingdom. And lastly, number four, we are his subjects. <laughs> God is the king. He has a kingdom. He has regulations. And you and I, we live under the kingdom of God. Oh, I hope you stay with me. I'm so filled with this stuff. I wish we, were, we would stay all day. But I want to read you this pastor, passage in John chapter 18 because it shows us everything that we want to know right here. This is Jesus right before he was crucified. He's standing before old Pilate, the governor. Therefore, Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summons Jesus and said to him, Are you king of of the Jews? Jesus answered, Ooh, this is powerful. Are you saying this on your own initiative? Or did others tell you about me? Do you really have a relationship with Jesus or you'd still live in what mom and daddy told you to live? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? You own nation, your own nation, and the chief priest delivered you to me. What have you done, Jesus? Jesus answered, here it is. This is what I want you to get. My kingdom, say it out loud, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would be not handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom, get this, my kingdom is not of this realm. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, so you're a king. <laughs> Jesus said, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born. And for this I have come into the world to testify of the truth. Whew. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Hmm. Pilate said to him, what is truth? You see, Pilate couldn't get the truth because he was not in the kingdom. There's a lot of people li living in the kingdom of darkness. They cannot get truth. And Jesus didn't even try to explain it to him because he realized, I'm looking at a guy who's in the kingdom of darkness. He'll never get what I'm talking about. Pilate said, what is truth? He just stopped right there. And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. 
Let me give you some truths about the kingdom. God's kingdom originated from heaven, not from the earth. When Jesus is before Pilate, Pilate said, are you a king? He said, yes, I'm a king. Now, if you're a king, that implies you have a kingdom somewhere. And notice Jesus' answer. He said, my kingdom is not in this world. My kingdom was not man-made. If my kingdom was man-made and of this world, I wouldn't be going to the cross right now. I wouldn't be, uh, I, I would be fighting. All of my uh, disciples would be fighting, but I told them, don't, don't be fighting. Uh, I, no, my kingdom is not of this world. There's not going to be a battle. That's not the way we do things. Secondly, God's kingdom has an absolute truth. If you don't listen to anything I say, please listen to this part right here. Jesus said, Pilate said, what is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Anybody who wants to come to heaven has got to come by me. Some people may say, well, I don't accept that as truth. That means you do not accept absolute truth. There's two truths in the world. There's an absolute truth, and then there's a relative truth. Absolute truth will put you in conflict with the culture today. And as believers, we believe in an absolute truth. But non-believers, they believe in a relative truth. What am I saying? Relative truth is how I feel. It's truth to me. It's my truth. It's this truth. Well, where did you get that truth? Well, that's just who I am. It's my truth and, and you're into relative truth. Whatever is relevant for the day, however you feel, relevant truth. It means how I feel and think. But when you're in absolute truth, it transcends your feelings. And, 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 it, and it's, when we Christians talk about absolute truth, we say Jesus is the absolute truth. I am the way the truth, and the light. So, let me illustrate that for you. Say um, you get a headache and you feel the pain in your head. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, you go grab a couple of aspirins. You put it in your head and, and because that's what you feel like you got to do. And about 30 minutes, an hour later, you're not feeling better, so you pop up a couple more aspirins, and, and no, I think maybe I didn't take enough aspirin. I feel like i got to take a couple more aspirin. And then, you, and then you take six aspirins, and boy, your head is still just pounding. You say, well, I think I better go to the doctor. You go to the doctor, and the doctor looks at you and takes a little uh, exam, and he says, hey, buddy, you have a tumor the size of a lemon in your brain. You see, you thought aspirin would <laughs> fix that. That's relative truth. But the truth was, you didn't know the truth. The truth was, you had a tumor. Aspirin won't touch that. Now you went to an expert. Now you've got the absolute truth. <laughs> Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? And Jesus basically said, if you understood my kingdom... If you were in my kingdom, you could understand truth. You will know the truth and the truth would set you free. Let me give you another part here. Lucifer. <laughs> Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall out of heaven like lightning. You see, he, Lucifer didn't like uh, God's kingdom. He rebelled and he wanted to take over that kingdom. And Lucifer does not want you to acknowledge the kingdom of heaven. He rules the kingdom of darkness. He's in charge of the dark domain. That's his kingdom. And he does not want you to believe in God. He, do, he does not want you. I mean, God's kingdom started before time, and it will be after time. And that's just the way it is. The devil didn't like it. He fell out of heaven, and uh, that's just the way it is. He rebelled and took one-third of heaven with him, and they started their own kingdom, and they've been in rebellion trying to overthrow who is this God with this absolute truth? Who does he think he is? I, I'm better than he. That kind of thinking right there sent the devil right out of heaven and sent him down to the earth. And he's been giving me a new problems ever since he's been here. But you know what? A lot of people in the realm that 
of darkness, in the kingdom of darkness, they think that they, they pretty much can, can work out all their problems on their own. Uh, they, and that's what the devil wants you to think. You, there's no God. You can work it out on your own. Just do it this way. Do it this way. You know, I taught a series a while back on uh, the book of Daniel, and Nebuchadnezzar learned this the hard way. Nebuchadnezzar walked out on his palace one day. He said, man, look at everything I've done. This great kingdom, it all, I'm bad, I'm bad. And bam, God hit that boy. He went insane for seven years and ate grass like a cow on the ground. And when it was all over, you know what old Nebuchadnezzar said? Heaven rules. It took seven years of insanity for him to come to an absolute truth. But heaven rules. Oh, I hope you don't have to have a hard time like that in your life before you come to the fact that Jesus is the truth. Here's another one. God's kingdom, you have to have the right perspective to be in God's kingdom. God's kingdom is to be lived from a perspective of heaven as it is is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. That's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and all of these other things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of righteousness. All these other things will be added to you. Too many Christians, watch this, too many Christians, they want to mix a little bit of God with a whole lot of world. <laughs> And then they wonder why their prayers don't work. They, don't, they wonder why they don't see the miracles they hear about in the Bible. Well, you, you got just a little, you, just enough of God to make you comfortable. And then you put all this, you mix the two kingdoms, and that's why you're not really successful at your attempt to live for God because uh, you never really experienced the heart change. you got to get it inside you. It's kingdom has got to live inside you because until you do, uh, you're going to be living in a culture. That's why we named this series the upside down, uh, upside down kingdom because, boy, when you start looking at the principles of God's kingdom, man, they run amok with the culture of the kingdom of this age. You know, we, prior, we prioritize God's kingdom here. Uh, God's kingdom, it has rules and uh, uh, it rules our lives. It, it rules our circumstances. If you want uh, the king's blessings, you must position yourself under the perspective that God is in charge here. You're no longer in the dark kingdom. You're in the kingdom of light. Let me illustrate it. When I was a youth pastor, uh, I, would, I would always pray early in the morning. Uh, this has been a habit of mine for, for ever since I've been born again. I pray every day in the morning time. And one Thursday morning, I was, uh, went to the church. I like praying in the dark, just a little bit of light. I don't know what that's all about. But I just pray, and, and I love walking around the sanctuary praying, and, and I can pray without the lights on. But, but uh, this day, I, I came off the platform, and just my regular routine, I was walking fast, and I was saying, Lord, it's good to see you today. And all of a sudden, bam, I ran into this big old wooden altar, that someone had moved. My friend, Pastor Greg Headley, had taught the Bible the night before in our Wednesday night Bible class. He moved the altar. I knew where that altar was, but I didn't know it was there that day. And I ran into that altar and hit my shin. And boy, excruciating pain came into my life. And a lot of cuss words. I think I spent the most of time in my prayer after that, just saying, hey, Lord, please forgive me for thinking of all these cuss words in the house of the Lord. And, uh, but I learned something. I would not have hit that altar had, I, had the lights been on. But you see, I was walking in darkness. <laughs> when you are spiritually blind like that, you wind up with painful spirit experience after painful experience after painful experience. You're just walking around in the kingdom of darkness and you're not walking in the kingdom of light. Oh, child, why don't you let the Lord turn the light of his kingdom on in your soul and you could see things? Well, let me give you this last part because there are some regulations in the kingdom. Some of you are going to really like this. The number, first regulation is, we're living under God's rules. 
Yep. We're living under God's rule. If you come over to my house, uh, we have certain rules at my house. When you walk into my house, there's certain things you don't do in my house. You know, we don't smoke in my house. Nope. If, you, if you're a smoker, I like you, but you're going to have to put the smoke outside the door. Uh, we don't play Ouija board at my house. You know, no, 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 no. You don't be bringing any Ouija board up in my house. I, I, I just can't do that. Don't be doing that. And if you're into voodoo, no, 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 no. You cannot come into my house, voodoo man, and try to cast a spell on me. <laughs> you can't. But then maybe you get inside my house and you start looking around and you say, well, I don't like the color of that wall over there. Man, who picked out this ugly furniture? <laughs> What's that all about? And, uh, and I basically will listen to you a little bit and then I will say, and your point is? I don't like your house. I don't like your furniture. I don't like it. And I don't, I don't like, like, like. Well, you have a decision you have to make. You're in my house. You're going to live by my rules. <laughs> if you don't like my furniture, <laughs> you got to go. And I tell you what, a lot of people don't understand this because the kingdom of God operates up under his rules. <laughs> we operate according to heaven's rules. And unless you want to create your own universe out there somewhere, we must adjust to the rules that God has laid down. But too many times, we like stubborn teenagers, we, we often, we, we, we come in the house, but we want to bring our own rules. You know, Karen and I brought a 17-year-old in our house. And before we got there, we, we started laying down the rules. <laughs> you will make your bed every day. You will clean your room. You will take out the trash. You will empty the dishwasher. You will do this, 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 and this. And you're going to show up with your best self every day. Some people say, whew, that's too many. That's too many rules. I, 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 I got to take the trash out. I, I, I got to clean my room. Yes. And you're going to do your own laundry too. If you're going to live up under my house, you can, you can enjoy the benefits of all this beautiful air conditioner I pay for. You can enjoy everything up under here. You can even watch my television as long as you don't mess with ESPN. You can watch my television. But if you don't want to obey the rules, it's time for you to get your own place, go out and create your own rules. You can't have the goodness of the house without the rules of the house. A lot of people want the good things of the kingdom, but they don't want to follow the rules of the kingdom. And that's my second point, because a lot of people have a Burger King God. <laughs> a Burger King God. Their theme is, have it your way, baby. Have it your way. You can manufacture your burger any way you want. You know, uh, this is what a lot of people do when they come to church. They, they want to have it their way. You know, uh, there's a chain of, of hamburger restaurants here in California all throughout the United States called In-N-Out Burger. And I think they got five things on their menu. <laughs> and you're going to either have a burger like this, like this, like this. You can have a shake. And you can have fried. What? Very simple, very, very simple menu. Uh, you can't go to in and out and say, Would it, I'd like a chicken burger. We don't make chicken here. Well, you need to make me a chicken burger. We don't do chicken here. Well, how about a pizza? I want a pizza. Brother, you better get out the long line because you see we have four or five things we do here. That's all we do. And do you know the line to... In and out burger sometimes is a half a mile long because people understand that's the way it is. If you want a burger that way, that's the way it is. If you want to have it your way and you want to have some chicken or some whatever, some chili fries, you got to go to Burger King. You got a Burger King mentality. That's what happens to us when we come to the church. We have a Burger King mentality. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means that God is in charge of everything and we follow his rules. 
Living with God and God's kingdom will bring us blessings, but uh, you don't get the blessing unless you get into the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you something. Uh, if you don't want to come up under that authority, and a lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people want to be their own authority. But let me give you a fancy word here and I'll get out of your way. God's kingdom is about God's sovereignty. Now don't, don't lose me right now. I'm going to teach you this word sovereignty because that means that God is totally in charge. Totally in charge. Watch these verses here. Psalm, Psalm says that, uh, uh, Psalm uh, 103, 19, the Lord has established his throne in the heaven and his sovereignty rules over all. It's a theocracy. It's his way or the highway. Here's another one in Psalm 115, 3. Our God is in the heaven. He does whatever he pleases. I don't like the way God does it. The psalmist had it. God does whatever he wants to do, however he pleases. Look at Psalm 145. I got one more for you. Verse number 13. The psalmist said, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Mm. So the question I have for you today have you made God sovereign? Do you really believe that he's in charge of it all? The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. Uh, the question is, do we want to align ourselves with God's sovereignty? He's in charge, not me. It's his way, not my way. You see, God's going to do what God wants to do. And God's ultimate plan will be done on the earth. It would benefit you and me if we were to jump in the wagon with God. Let me give you this last verse. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28 says this. We know, we know that God causes all things to work together for good. For those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Watch this. The Bible says, Oida, it's the Greek word oida. We oida God. The word to know oida means intuitive, intuitive knowledge. It means that we can know what we don't know. It means that we can even know what we don't feel like we know. It means that we know uh, uh, something down inside of us when everything is opposite in our culture. You know, this has happened to me before. The doctor says, man, you got cancer, you're going to die. But something down on the inside of my soul, my knower, <laughs> my knower said, no, 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 no. You do not have cancer. You will live. You know what? My knower was right because God I'm in his kingdom and I'm one of his subjects and I know that all things, I don't just head knowledge, no, I know down in my knower, I know that all things are going to work together. Everything is going to be all right. You know, when I was a kid, uh, and you, you, I think you probably experienced this as well. You remember that little um, jack in the box that we had in the box Remember how we used to wind it up? Boom! Out pops a weasel or whatever was in that. I can't, it's a clown or something. Went, boom! And then when we got tired of playing, we'd push the clown back and push the thing to a side. And I think sometimes if we're not careful as Americans or wherever you are, I think sometimes... We like that kind of God, God in a box. Just come out when we wind it up, Lord. Just come out when we need you. Just come out. <laughs> Not so with the kingdom person. A kingdom-minded person gets up in the morning and says, Good morning, Lord. <laughs> Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice, be made glad. What are you doing today, Lord? I want in on your business. I don't want to do it my way. I tried it my way. I want, no, 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 no. I want it your way. God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on 
earth, in my soul, as it is in heaven. Do you want to become a kingdom person? You've got to accept the fact. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I don't like that. Okay, you're not ready. Pilate wasn't ready. You're not ready. So, but if you're ready, <laughs> and I hope you are, I would invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. Make the kingdom of heaven in charge of your soul. The best life you could ever get. I want to pray for you right now. If you're watching me, you listen to me, please do not move. Uh, don't go to the restroom right now. Um, this is the most important prayer any person living in darkness can pray because this is the prayer that puts you into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of his dear son. You got to humble yourself. You got to say, God, you're in charge. I'm not. God, I humble myself. Uh, we're going to do that right now. Everybody just stay seated right where you are. And maybe the whole household should repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my life. I invite God's kingdom to live inside of me. I humble myself under the hand of God. I want to be in the kingdom of Jesus. Please forgive all my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Take this guilt out of me. You died for me. I'm going to live for you, Jesus. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen.